everyone welcome back to code and boots so in this video today we are going to discuss about uh, the devops capability in gitlab so gitlab is a very popular version control and uh, devops system uh, that is used by like used in the industry over several years i have been using this gitlab from almost like 10 years and uh, this is one of my favorite uh, version control system and we use it for devops as well uh, so to get started, what we will do is, uh, so GitHub has a free online account. So uh, there are multiple options. GitHub, Git, GitLab comes with uh, an enterprise edition and GitLab has a community edition as well. So you can basically deploy GitLab in your local environment. Basically, you, if you have a server, let's say if you have a server, you can install the community edition of GitLab and you can use it for free. So uh, I have used it for several years the self-hosted version so we I have manually installed it in a server and it works very well it works uh, it has very powerful features everything and let's say if you don't want to manage it uh, then you have an option to use the online version of GitLab and uh, it has some subscription fee and you have to pay for it and there is also an option to install the enterprise edition of uh, uh, GitLab so that is that is something that you can install again on the server and it has some additional capabilities that comes with the enterprise edition and uh, you can get uh, get the enterprise features by paying the license fee so here today we are going to basically get introduced uh, to the free version of the online gitlab so for as a developer or as a devops engineer so or as a software engineer if you want to learn gitlab you don't have to basically install this in a server or anything what you can do is you can just create a free account in gitlab so just like how you create uh, an account in github you just you can just simply sign up an account in the gitlab and get started in, in very few minutes so gitlab has a very nice documentation so you can go over it so uh, it is self-explanatory so what i'm going to do is uh, today i will introduce you about uh, setting up an online account and setting up a self-hosted runner for running a DevOps pipeline, a CACD pipeline in GitLab. Okay, so GitLab, uh, I think, I mean, I hope, I mean, you are aware of runner. Runner is something basically, uh, when you run a CACD pipeline, so the execution happens in an infrastructure. It, it happens in a server. So the server or, I mean, basically the container uh, in which the execution happens is called the runner. So GitLab supports different type of runners, Docker runners, shell, Basically, like I mean, it supports various type of runners. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to basically run or configure this GitLab's runner in my own server. So I'm going to use an AWS EC2 instance for uh, running this uh, or configuring this runner and the online version of the GitLab so that my code will run from my runner. So running, so GitLab by default provides built-in runners also, but especially in enterprise use cases, uh, people uses self-hosted runners. The reason is the code in the runner, when you do a build or deploy or some other operation in your runner or in your pipeline, so the code will be interacting with so many things within your environment. So if the runner is running within your environment or the hosted environment, it will be very useful for you because you don't have to worry about the network connectivity or the permissions. Because if it is running within GitLab's premises, what will happen? If it is running outside your environment, what will happen? Then the connectivity will be, will become a problem. So if it is within within your, so I'll I'll draw and I'll show you how it. Oh, sorry. So I'll draw and I'll show you how how it looks like. So basically, in an online version of GitLab. So let's say GitLab is in the web. Okay, and you have your network. This is your company network or your home network, whatever. So, or your cloud network. Okay. So let's say you have a server and you are configuring your runner within the server. Okay. This is your runner. So what will happen is GitLab will, whenever you execute a pipeline. Okay. So GitLab, GitLab will make a communication with this runner. GitLab will be communicating with this runner and runner will execute the job in this particular server. So let's say you have some other system. Let's say you have a database here. Okay, so you have a database here. Uh, you have some other system here. So this 
code that you run as part of the runner the pipeline that run as part of the runner wants to communicate with these things it becomes very easy because the runner the code is running the pipeline is running locally within your environment so the gitlab becomes what the place where you store your code okay code and pipeline okay the execution happens within let's say this is the work which is private okay so and from this runner machine okay so runner machine it is basically an outbound traffic so you don't even have to basically enable a public facing endpoint or anything from the runner machine it's going to be an outbound traffic so the runner will be communicating with the gitlab server so this is how the communication happens okay so now let's get into the action so what we are going to do is let's quickly provision an ec2 instance so what i'm going to do is i'm going to provision an ubuntu instance the minimal sized ubuntu instance okay so now let's pick up ubuntu here so okay then i'm going to go with the uh, smaller version the t2 micro and instance type t2 micro i'm i have a key pair with me okay if you don't have a key pair you can create something new and i'll use an existing security group which has access here what i have done is it has only ssh access from my environment and the internet access from the server nothing else in the security group okay so default 8 gb so in case of production scenarios you will have to basically upsize this one but for me to demonstrate i am going with the minimal version i am going to launch the machine right now so it should be up quickly okay so this machine it's in pending station status let's wait for this machine to come up yeah it's in running status now let's log into this machine okay so this is the public ip so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open my putty paste this okay credentials i have a key with me okay i have used a ubuntu machine so the username is going to be ubuntu fine so now okay so now let's go to the git lab okay so i have already created an online account so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to create a new project here okay so new project create a blank project so here you can you have various templates uh, or you can import projects okay so from uh, other version control systems like uh, like github bitbucket or uh, different version of different gitlab itself okay so let's create a blank project so i am creating so i am creating something with gitlab runner demo okay so this is my project name and i have made it private okay so then let's create it okay so the project got created so now what i'm going to do is in the settings okay in the settings if you see there is something called cicd settings then if you see cicd okay then you can see something called runner so i'm going to expand this now if you see here right now there are no active runners okay but on the right hand side you can see two things one is project runner and is second one is shared runner okay so this is basically the runners provided by gitlab so this is an online version of gitlab so you see gitlab.com okay not a uh, i mean self hosted version of gitlab so here this by default comes with some shared runners okay so these are the shared runners available in the gitlab okay so i am not going to use the shared runner so what i am going to do is i am going to self host basically do a self hosted runner so what we need is so on the left hand side if you see this is something that we can do setup 
a project runner for the project okay so it has a detailed instruction that shows like i mean how to configure this runner so on click of that you will see the various option so we can configure runners in on in a linux machine mac os windows docker okay uh, kubernetes okay or directly like i mean the aws itself we can do that okay so i am going to do go with the linux option generic linux option assume I, uh, you have a server so let's say if you don't have a linux machine what you can do is you can follow the steps that is mentioned here for windows and you can do it in your laptop also so this runs from your laptop as well so i since i have an aws instance i am going to go with the steps that is mentioned for the linux so what i'll do is i can do a copy of all these commands in one go from here i copy it and i'm going to paste it here so what will happen it will download the GitLab runner binary. Okay. Then second thing what it will do, it will basically configure the symlink to the so download and move this runner to this location, giving execute permission to this runner. Okay. And then it is doing an installation of this runner. Okay. And it is specifying the home directory of the runner as slash home slash GitLab runner. And next is it is starting the runner. Let's see whether the GitLab runner is running or not. So GitLab runner status, it is showing running. What I'll do is I'll increase the phone size of this. System colors, appearance, make it 14. Okay. Yeah. So this looks better. Now the GitLab runner is running. Now let's go to the GitLab again, we have to register the runner. Now the runner is running, the runner process is running. Now we need to register this runner. So what we need is, we need to copy this, okay? And next is here in the place of registration token, we will have to use the registration token of our project, okay? So what I'll do is I'll copy this project registration token. This is a secret value. So, and I'm going to execute this. registration command okay yeah so it is asking the gitlab instance url in my case it is a public gitlab the web online version of gitlab.com so i i mine is going to be http colon double slash gitlab.com okay it's a default value next is a token i have already passed the token so default value next is the description of the runner i'll put i'm just putting self hosted runner on yes okay enter tags what i'll do self-hosted so this tag is something that we will use it in our pipeline to route or run our pipeline cicd pipeline in the specific runner we can have multiple runners within a project and we can route the pipelines to the specific runner uh, using this tag okay so we can have multiple tags i'm just giving one tag self-hosted so then maintenance node it's an optional one i'm going to leave blank Okay, now it is asking what type of executor. I'm going to go with shell executor. I just specified shell. Okay. So the configuration is saved. Now I think what we can do is I think the GitLab, let's verify whether it is active or not. Okay, let's refresh this page. Let's expand the runners again. You will see assigned project runner you can see self-hosted aws run this is the description that i gave and this is the tag that i gave so now the runner is up okay so i hope this is now we have the runner ready and uh, we have basically the execution uh, engine ready so let's start with the pipeline so let's get back come back to the project home so uh, our project name is gitlab runner demo right so if you see this is an empty project there is nothing so there are options like add license okay so we can add license so there are various templates available with this so we can create license change law we can add add contributing kubernetes cluster we can add okay so there are various options we will discuss about these options in like the upcoming videos so what we are going to do is today uh, we are going to set up a simple cicd simple pipeline to test our runner okay simple cicd pipeline so let's click on the simple CICD, set up CICD. So what it will do is it will create 
a yaml file okay so git ci dot yaml this is the yaml file okay it will get created in the root of the project so i created clicked on that so what will happen is it will create a template of gitlab pipeline yaml okay so if you see this i'll give an explanation of what is there in this yaml so at the top you can see stages okay so these are the various stages in the pipeline so this entire yaml is the definition of a pipeline okay so let's let's talk about this okay so let's let me open a new okay so let's say we have a pipeline with three steps step a step a step b and step c okay and you want to execute this in stages one two three okay so this first step a will execute first step b, b will execute second step c will execute third okay or maybe let's say you have multiple steps in the step b itself in the stage b you have multiple things so what will happen is step a will execute first then here let's say b dash b1 b2 and b3 okay there are three steps or three components or three uh, okay three stages in the second stage okay step b so what will happen it will execute these three stage stage stages within the step b stage b and then after that it will execute the step c okay so this entire workflow okay uh, the it is defined in the gitlab using a yaml file so here you can see the sample template has uh, something called build test deploy okay so this is something like uh, something similar to how we develop our application right we do the build then we we test the build then after that we deploy it to the environment that's why they have symbolically given the stage names as build test and deploy so you can give any name to the stage okay you can give st stage one stage two whatever so let's keep i mean the same name as build so and you will see the definition of these stages below so you can see the first this is like i mean what this is a job right so build job and here the stage is built we can tag multiple stages i mean multiple jobs to the same stage so here first is like i first job is the build job and it is linked to the first stage that is a build stage and we are just doing echo compiling code compiling complete just doing some simple print okay and second is test test job okay this is so how we how we define a job is basically this is the structure so first is the name then just do like i mean basically two or three spaces two spaces after that define the stage okay link it to the stage then script under the script we can do we can do the shell script okay whatever you want to execute so it can be like i mean right now it is just doing some print and all but in your pipeline let's say you want to do like i mean a compilation you can have like the compilation steps here the entire compilation steps okay and there are other arguments also as part of every job this is like a very simple job that's why we are going with the simple structure so inside this we can configure variables we can configure uh, let's say if you are building in a docker we can configure the image which image to run so there are so many configurations but to start with let's go with the simple one so this is the first job this is the second job you see it is part of the stage test and you see this is the third job okay so it is again part of the stage test and this is the fourth job it is part of the stage deploy so let's visualize this to what is this doing this is doing the lint test in case of uh, real programming world what will happen lint is what we are just checking the code quality right we are basically doing the code quality and the unit test okay it's doing like i mean doing unit test and the code quality in the test stage and doing the deploy in the last stage okay so this will be this can be related to a picture something like this so we have stage 1 stage 2 which has two things and stage 3 okay so this is build 
test and deploy let's say tomorrow if you want another stage you can define the stage you can have n number of stages in this one okay and here we have the first build job okay and second we have here unit test and this is the second job in the test stage this is lint test and this is the deploy okay and let us run this okay let us run this so you will see syntax is correct if there is any syntactical problem it will highlight here okay gitlab will highlight here so checking pipeline status let us go to the runner and see whether the pipeline what's the status of the pipeline okay you will see it is pending what is the problem it is build job it is right now in the build job okay so you see the job is stuck because the project so because if you see this the job is not moving it is in the post state okay you will see let's see what is the message the job is stuck because the project doesn't have any runner online runners online assigned to it okay so there is one option we can basically set the default runner of this project other option is in the pipeline itself we can specify which runner to use so in your pipe in our pipeline if you see we have not specified which runner to which runner this jobs has to use right so what we will do is we will modify this pipeline slightly to to use the runner so if you remember while configuring the runner we have used something called tag okay in our case the tag was self hosted right so what i'll do is we will basically use tag here tag okay so this was the tag name that we have used in our in our runner so what it will do is each job we will pick up this particular runner and execute the job in that particular runner let's configure to each of these jobs self hosted self hosted last okay so now let's run this now let's see so this is okay this is contains unknown keys tag okay it is not tag it is tags sorry it is tags it is not tag okay it is tags so typo so this gitlab has a web ide also so it is very user friendly so now you will see validating okay the configuration is valid okay now let's see what is happening with the cicd go to click on go to cicd click on pipelines let's see what is happening here so it got failed okay it started execution but it got failed if you see the status you see the stages this is the build this is the test and deploy but they did not execute because the build got failed right let's see what is wrong with this build job now you see using shell executor preparing environment and you see there is an error okay this is a known error with this gitlab self hosted runner on ubuntu machines okay so what you have to do is when we install here if you see we have configured a directory slash home slash gitlab runner okay if you see this if you see at the time of configuration we have used the working directory as slash home gitlab runner right so what happens is there is a user that is getting created as part of the installation of gitlab okay that is the gitlab user gitlab runner user So let's get into the home directory of that user. That is let's slash home slash GitLab runner. So here, if you check, this directory is not empty. Okay. So this has something called as part of a user creation in the Linux. This file gets created. Bash logout. Okay. So let's remove this file. <coughs> now, 
Now let's run this pipeline again. Okay, let me rerun this stage again and see whether this works out works or not. Because this is happening because of that particular file. Now you see it picked up, it executed. So now let's check the pipeline. You will see the stage one got completed. You will see a tick mark. Now it is running the test. Okay. So right now in our case, it is just dummy test job. It is just doing echo test and it is just doing a sleep command. We can monitor the progress by clicking on this. You will see, or you can monitor in this way. Click on this. You will see the entire graph. Okay. You can see build got completed. Unit test job is running right now. Okay. And if you want to see the details, click on that. It will show the log view. Okay. So here we have a sleep for 60 seconds, which is defined in the YAML file. That's why it is just waiting for 60 seconds. This is a dummy job. Let's wait for that 60 seconds to complete. So after that, it will pick up the next. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, it got completed. Now you see after one minute, it got completed. So like this, we can create very superb, very complicated pipelines in GitLab. So this is very useful. And as a developer, every developer has to learn this, not just developer, every software engineer has to learn this because uh, in this way, you can automate the deployment, the build. Okay. And uh, now I, I nowadays, the entire infrastructure is also getting uh, created using code, infrastructure as code, using Terraform. Uh, like some time back, it was all through Ansible. Now Terraform is, uh, I mean, Ansible was for mostly like, I mean, the on-premise machines, but Ansible had like, I mean, uh, capabilities to provision on cloud also, but now Terraform is the, is the hero. So this is very useful and we can use link, we can create pipelines for deploying Terraform scripts also so i hope you enjoyed this video this is useful uh, i hope you this is this video is a useful one thank you thank you very much for watching uh, have a great day